So it can be very difficult to diagnose sick or dying colonies to work out what's happening with them. There are some really good symptoms for most of these things to give you an idea of what's happening. Um, the first one, and perhaps one of the easiest ones to diagnose is starvation. Um, if a colony starves, there won't be any honey stored. And what you typically see is a big pile of dead bees on the floorboard and a whole lot of bees that have crawled head first into cells. Um, and the head first into cells bit is really, you only ever see with starvation. Now, starvation can happen because the colonies have grown too much and out, outgrown their food supplies and the beekeepers have not fed them enough, but it can also occur when a colony's been robbed out. I, other hives have come and stolen the honey um, and the bees, the colony itself has lost it all and starved to death. A second um, thing that has reasonably good symptoms is colonies that have death, died by poisoning. And this is um, either poisoning outside because the bees have been foraged on something that's had an insecticide sprayed on it, or they have died inside because the beekeeper has actually done something to kill them. And we have a number of examples of that, and it usually involves beekeepers trying to control wax moth where they use chemicals in the winter to control wax moth. And some of the ones that get used, unfortunately, are ones that are actually toxic to bees without the beekeeper knowing. They then put the, the boxes back on the hives again and kill the colony in it. And typically you have this big pile of bees outside the hive this time. You may have some on the floorboard, but they mostly have died outside and you don't see bees crawling into cells. The next thing you quite often see is queen-related problems. And one of those, a typical one is a drone layer. And this is where drones, sorry, where, where either the queen has run out of semen so she can only lay unfertilized eggs, or the whole colony has become queenless and not been able to replace themselves. And you have a laying worker. And because it's a laying worker, she, that's of course not mated, she can only lay unfertilized eggs as well and unfertilized eggs um, of course only produce drones. So you typically just see drone larvae in worker cells. The other thing which is really common, well sorry, it's getting more common, is something that we have seen since Varroa came into New Zealand. Um, not, a, not to do with Varroa, but another pathogen that has come into New Zealand and may have come in at the same time. Um, and this is Nesema serrana. We have Nesema apis, which is a fungal gut pathogen of honeybees. has been in New Zealand probably for a lot, as long as bees have been. Doesn't show any classical symptoms. Unless you've got a microscope, it's really hard to tell whether colony's been infected or, or not. It's just that colonies with really bad infections don't do so well. Now, Nassima serrana is different. We think it got in here after 2000. When it was first associated with clinical symptoms was a case in Thames, where the beekeeper reported symptoms similar to what was reported around the rest of the world for colony collapse disorder. This is where you had a whole box of bees and brood, really good colony in the spring, ready to put more boxes on to collect honey. Then over a period of a week or two, you come and look at it, and all it's got is a queen, a handful of bees, and all this brood that's all been abandoned because the bees can't, there's not enough bees to keep it warm. Where all the other bees have gone, we don't know. They've flown out there, what we assume, to die. And those are very similar symptoms, as I say, to colony collapse disorder. And when they tested some of the bees that were left, they, te they tested Nesema, they found Nesema serrana. Like Nesema apis, that's another gut parasite. Um, as its name suggested, it came, comes from the same pl place that Varroa came from, this other species of honeybees, um, Apis serrana. That's where Varroa originally came from, and, and this is well. And Nesema serrana, where Nesema apis doesn't have these major effects, has this big effect. So if you, if you come to a colony, there's a queen in there, all this healthy looking brood, but it's been abandoned, so it's dying, and a handful of bees, you need to think the Sema serrana, what can you do about it? Um, there was a study 
done on Nassim Apis that suggested if you heat boxes for 50 degrees for two hours and then put the bees back in there again, um, you will control the Nassima apis infections and it also works very well with Nassima serrana. When we tested this in Coromandel, we got about a 20 to 30 percent increase in the number of bees in the colonies that we'd put back onto clean comb and also in the, um, the amount of brood that the colonies had. So it had quite a, quite, quite a big effect. Now how do you do this? Well, I say you have to heat boxes for two for at 50 degrees for two days. Um, then to transfer the colonies to them, put your clean box on top of your hive above a queen excluder. Take your queen and a frame of brood and put them into that box. Once the queen, once all the brood is hatched underneath the excluder, you can take that away, the floorboard away, and replace them with heated boxes. And then all you have to do is take this one frame you lift above the excluder, put that somewhere so it can hatch, and then remove that well and, and replace it. And that way you can get the bees shifted onto all new equipment and um, have a positive effect on your colonies. It is time consuming to do, but if you're having real problems with a seamless around there, it's definitely worth doing. So in summary, the symptoms for starvation are easy. Um, it's be piles of bees on the floor of the hive and crawled in cells. Poisoning, normally piles of bees outside the hive. If most of your bees have disappeared on you and all there is a queen and a few bees, it's probably Nassima serrata. <laughs>